Hi, welcome to another board game review from Unfiltered Gamer. Today we are reviewing Life Super Mario Edition and it plays two to four players for ages eight and up. Yep, and in the game of Life Super Mario Edition, we're basically going to be attempting to uh, cross the, what is the Super Mario world called? I don't even know. The world of Super Mario. <laughs> and the different levels. And our objective is to acquire stars and get to Bowser's castle. This game uh, kind of plays like like a, like the video game. Yeah, the Mario Party on the Wii and the Switch, Switch and all yeah. the other ones. Mm -hmm. And you're basically attempting to gather coins, use those coins to buy stars of different colors, and then use those stars to roll on this marker here a 12 up. So if you roll an eight and you have four stars, you add those four to your eight, and if you roll a 12, you win and you defeat Bowser. If not, you go back to start, gathering more stars and trying to defeat Bowser once again. There's a ton of different cards. You have the item cards, you have the mini game cards, the companions, and then you have action cards. Everybody's going to start with a certain amount of coins and a character and place them on the start position and you're going to start the game, which we'll talk about the setup and then of course we'll talk about our review right after. To start, you will pick a character, place them on the start, and you grab 10 coins, uh, one five and five small ones. <laughs> <laughs> and then you'll shuffle out um, all the decks of cards and place them out. And yeah, after you've placed your character on the start position and divvied out everything, the last thing you need to know is that there are little stars. There are six different colored stars and you'll have them in these little organizer trays. And uh, you're going to be gathering them throughout the game board. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. There's a little bit of setup when it comes to this little spinny device here, and uh, you'll choose a player to go first, and then that player will start by spinning the spinner. Who gets to go first? The last player to... Play Mario. Okay, uh, that'll work. <laughs> So in order to play the game, it's actually really, really simple. It's similar to the game of life, but also kind of a mix match of Mario Party, the uh, video game that you would play on all the different Nintendo systems. You have your character, you take your little dial here, you spin it, and then whatever it lands on, that's the number of spaces you go. Whenever you come to an intersection or a crossing of the lines, you get to choose which way to go, but otherwise you just keep going in that direction. And the little characters have a little arrow on them that will indicate which way you're facing to denote which way you're going. So if I roll the five, I would then choose to go left or right, and then I would go one, two, three, four, and five. There are different spaces in the game board. All of the green ones, if you land on them, you're going to get coins. All of the red ones, if you land on them, you will lose coins. Whenever you cross over an orange space, you'll have an option. What's that option? Um, you can stop. That's right. That one, you can grab an item. Yep, so there are different orange spaces on the board, and based on the orange space, you'll have the opportunity to stop if you want. They're kind of like, stop if you want or not. Uh, some of them are gonna be items, others are going to be companions, which are little question marks, and others will be little, um, what are they tubes. called? Tubes. And you're gonna be able to go from one tube to the exact same color tube uh, somewhere else on the side of the board. So the little like warp gates. There are also spaces where you must stop, and those spaces are called what? The coin space? The star? Yeah, they're the star spaces. They're the spaces that will allow you to spend coins, 10 coins to be exact, to get a star, and or, or not and or, just or, five coins. So if you can't afford a star, you can buy coins from here, or get coins from here. But you have to stop on all the spaces that have the stars. You can only purchase one of each color star, and there's one color star in each of the six different locations, and each of them are donated by a color, whether it be red, or the color blue, the least cool color of all, or uh, maybe orange or green or whatever. And you'll be placing them actually on your character. So when you spend 10 coins to get a red, you can go ahead and stick it into your little character. Now you've got one of these stars. Now what is the purpose of a star? When you get to Bowser at the end, it will allow you to have plus one for your spin. Yeah, and in order to fight Bowser, you're gonna spin this when you get to the space at the very end, and then you'll add this value plus your stars, and if the total amount is 12 or more, you instantly win the game. So you don't actually have to get all the stars in order to win, but it doesn't hurt to get more of them to guarantee you victory. Um, other spaces are going to let you draw certain cards, like mini game cards, where you'll have certain challenges against all the other players, similar to Mario Party, and uh, companions, which will give you a lucky number. When, whenever somebody or yourself rolls that number, you'll get to enact the ability, whether it be stealing coins, or whether it be going to any space on the board. They do different things. You can have 
three companions total, and you can have one item card. Item cards are what you can use to save. They'll give you certain things like add five to your spin, or maybe subtract three to an opponent's spin, or uh, firepower. It lets you steal a star from somebody. Ooh, it's really powerful. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. You will spin this guy here. You'll move your character that number of spaces, choosing to stop on any orn if you'd like. Orange, I say orn. Orange if you'd like. Or just continuing to move until you hit your space of allocated numbers. And the first person to go around the board, collect as many stars as they would like, and get to Bowser's castle, and then roll and succeed by getting a 12 plus, is the winner of the game. If you cannot defeat Bowser, though, what happens? You lose all your coins and you go back to start. Yeah, which is pretty rough, but there are spaces like these little tunnels here that can let you transport yourself so that you have an opportunity to fight him again. And in fact, Alicia did, did fight him again uh, the second time, which we'll talk a little bit more about. But that's pretty much the idea of the game. So let's go ahead and tell you what we think about uh, the Game of Life Super Mario Edition. Okay, so let's discuss the game. Um, first thing we'll talk about, as usual, is the uh, artwork of the game. Uh, what you thought about the quality of art, all the different cards, cards, of the different characters, um, and of course the quality. So for artwork for me, I like the fact that each of the different areas has kind of a unique uh, level to it, or like a world feel, like you have the underwater world, you have the um, desert world, this is a, uh, what is this guy? This is like the, the Haunted Mansion. The Haunted Mansion, yes, yes. And then this is like the original Mario levels, whatever mm -hmm. they're called. And then um, maybe this one's the original, I don't know, this one has a little spinner. And then you have Bowser's Castle, where you fight Bowser at the end. So thematically it works very well, moving to the different worlds, gathering the stars you need. It kind of reminds me of the Mario 64 game, as far as gathering the different stars in the different areas with an attachment to the Mario Party uh, games because you're spending coins to get the stars. And stars are only useful for when you roll against Bowser, but that's the most important thing in the game. And uh, it does tie itself in really well together. All the artwork on the cards work as well. Um, they're pretty straightforward. A lot of the character characters are just little portraits and explaining what they do. And it's very easy to know what they do and understand the cards. Like once you, I don't think we ever drew a card and didn't know what they did. Um, additionally, you have the mini games, right? Um, most of them involve spinning the little spinner here and whoever gets the highest number is the winner. But there's a couple other ones like rock, paper, scissors, and thumb wars, which I'm less inclined to be interested in doing. I actually see, rather see more things involving the game itself than yeah. us like, uh, Especially since I'm a cripple. Yeah, like, you want to place a thumb war? Let's go with the thumb war now. No. <laughs> she heard her hand playing snowboarding, or not snowboarding, sl sledding. She was on it all by herself, and she oh, tried to do a I? she tried to do a flip, and she just crashed, and that's mm -hmm. what happened. Right in the dirt. Yeah, I would rather see something less involving, like, a, I don't want to play a separate game that's not part of this game that affects this game. I don't want to play rock, paper, scissors. I don't want to, I don't know, do a thumb war. I don't want to do the game where you put your hands on top of mine. You ever done that one before? Where you slap the hand of the person? Anyway, it's, it doesn't work very well, but using the spinner actually worked pretty well. Uh, item cards are pretty cool. Uh, there's also, obviously, a bit of luck involved in this game as to spinning the dial and, of course, uh, getting the right items you want, but they all function pretty well as far as the theme goes uh, for the game. And then of course, quality, everything is really nice actually. This is uh, one of my favorites that they've made in a while. I really like the fact that they added this uh, insert here that actually has all the characters. You can add your action cards and your coins and all the stars as opposed to the Animal Crossing version of this game. This one has a much nicer organizer and things are like set up very simply. Now, it doesn't take so long to set this game up either. And that's all to do with the quality of the game and how it is put together. And even these really nice uh, miniatures. I really, really like these. This is my favorite part of the game. Uh, what do you think about the artwork and of course the, uh, the quality of the game itself? I think you pretty much said everything I was thinking. I really like how like you can see all the little levels because I love playing all of the Mario games. Yeah. So this reminds me a lot of uh, Mario Party, but also the artwork reminds me of Super Mario Brothers. Yeah, um, I mean, there's an original game uh, that came out that was kind of like changed the way Hasbro thought of these type of games and like how they made. They didn't just keep re replaying and replaying the same old games with unique IPs. They started actually changing the way the games have been made. And um, one of them was called Mario Gamer, I think, or game, yeah, Monopoly Gamer. It's and it involved. Uh, 
it involved playing Monopoly, but it was really quick, high, high quality components, and I played a lot like I played a lot like the game we play all the time with the cars, Mario Kart. Now uh, we play like Mario Kart, where you go around the board and you're like fighting each other and trying to shell each other and getting dropping coins on the on the board, and that one was really really great. They they kind of implemented that in all of their newer games, and this one's no exception. And it's also different in the fact of this type of game that it's kind of attached to, which is the theme of Mario Party and the theme of um, what do you call it? The Mario different Mario different games and all that kind of stuff. Um, so, uh, yeah, I really, really dig this game uh, as, as far as the quality of the art and whatnot goes. Uh, what about the mechanics of the game, how it plays, did it feel right to you, that kind of thing? Yeah, like I said, it reminds me of Mario Party, which I really like that game. Um, it's a lot quicker than the original Life game. Oh yeah, much like. quicker. Yeah, which I really like. Um, it's pretty simple to get to the end. You can actually simply straight go to Bowser if you wanted to. Yeah. Uh, you'd only need two stars to do it, but you'd have to roll a 10, which is mm -hmm. the highest number on here, which means you'd have one, uh, 10% chance to win with only two stars. So you probably want more than that, but you could try and win instantly. And it's possible, especially when you roll a nine with uh, only like, what, four stars? And I had all six and I still never got to Bowser. So you have to Why kind of make- Why didn't you get to Bowser? Yeah, because it made me go back to spaces. It's like go to the yellow space when I was all the way at the very end. These dang action cards can be of use to you or they can be uh, not, so, not so nice. They're kind of random when it comes to that. Um, yeah, I, 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 the spinner worked really well. Uh, I enjoy the fact that you can kind of move around the board a lot easier. You can choose the spaces you want a lot more than the original life game, as opposed to just dropping and seeing where it goes. You have more choice. As to, oh, okay, I can go this way, or I can go this way, or this way, and I can end up in these locations here, and I can move across the board easier, and maybe I want coins. You're almost never not able to get coins to get the stars you need, so you never feel like you're falling behind. And even if you are behind, you can still win the game. You can try and attempt Bowser, and you'll have that opportunity to win. Uh, it is fully luck-driven, though. You could get companions that you don't like, menu games you don't like, and items you don't like, as opposed to ones you do like. And action cards could benefit you as far as getting something like a free star, getting a, a warp pipe, um, being able to steal stuff from players, and of course you might have to just fight a baddie and of course lose coins. So it has that randomization to it, which works really well for a kid's game. Mechanically works very well. If you like the game Life, this is a better version in my opinion. I enjoyed it more, I like the theme more, and the quality of the components. Um, probably about equivalent to, to Life, I would say, except for the fact that you have these miniatures which are really, really excellent. So overall, mechanically I like, and overall in this game, I really, really enjoyed it. This is probably my favorite next to the Monopoly Gamer version of the Hasbro games that I've seen so far, and I've reviewed three or four of them now. The last one I remember reviewing was the Animal Crossing one, which was fine, but there was just a, so many components and so much setup. This is just so much cleaner, so much easier. The rules are very straightforward, very easy to understand, and it's gonna work very well for a kid's game. This is a great family game. It plays four players. Would be nice to probably have five, maybe even six players. I don't see why they couldn't have done that, but, um, I don't really have a whole lot of negatives, other than, of course, if you don't like chance games, if you don't like games that are gonna be able to hurt other players, like you can steal their stars and steal their coins and all that kind of stuff, you're probably not gonna like it so much. Is that, is that about right overall, yeah. your, your thoughts? Yeah, definitely, if you like luck games, you'll like this one. Okay, well, no, then this is going to be a game for families then, mainly. Mm -hmm. that's, that's kind of what I felt. Kids as well would play this game. Hardcore gamers, maybe not. And of course, those Mario lovers in your family. Yes. Yeah, so if you're interested in the game of life, Mario version, go ahead and take a lick, look, look, link down in the description where you can go ahead and click and uh, pick it up if you'd like from Hasbro. Uh, really quality game, one of my favorites so far. Thank you for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game. Life. <laughs> yes, Life Super Mario Edition. And like I said, if you want to pick it up, link down below in the description. You can also go ahead and check our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Don't forget to also go ahead and check our live stream every Sunday at 6.30 p.m.
PST, West Coast, United States. And if you'd like, you can join us on Patreon for a dollar. One dollar goes a whole long way, helps us do more of our live streams, helps us uh, pay for all the additional things we have going on here, like our Discord and new equipment, etc., etc. We do appreciate that. And if you would like, you can also go ahead and check out our other videos here. Like, comment, and do what to the channel? Subscribe. And hit that bell notification button, which you will find right. Perfect. That's that's where it's gonna go. All right, guys. Thank you so much. And as always, we look forward to seeing you guys next time. Ah, she got that one. <laughs>